As a consequence of infection spreading beyond the confines of the mastoid process, several abscesses can manifest. These are Bezold's abscess, Sitilis abscess, Lux abscess, Zygomatic abscess and the subperiosteal mastoid abscess. Let us have a detailed look at these manifestations. Bezold's abscess. Bezold's abscess is an abscess in the sternomastoid muscle or underneath it where pus from mastoiditis escapes into the muscle. It is a rare complication of acute otitis media. Here is a case of Bezold's abscess of an abscess in the sternomastoid muscle and this is a CT image showing it. Bezold's abscess was named after Frederick Bezold, who was a German otologist, 1842-1908. Bezold's abscess is defined as a spread of infection through a perforation of the mastoid along the digastric groove and into the substance of the sternomastoid muscle. Once formed, the abscess may spread along the large vessel sheets to reach the mediastinum, down the muscles of the vertebral column to reach the prevertebral space, or most commonly, along the subclavian artery to reach the posterior triangle. In the pre-antibiotic era, Bezold's abscess was a common complication of acute mastoiditis from extensive spread into the mediastinum and prevertebral space. Sitilis abscess Acute mastoiditis is a complication of acute suppurative otitis media. In developed countries with effective primary and secondary health care, it is nowadays rare, largely due to the widespread use of antibiotics for acute separative otitis media. However, if the preceding attack is untreated or fails to respond, the inflammatory process will persist and increase in the mastoid air cells. The accumulation of pus in the air cells leads to necrosis of bony walls of the cells producing the so-called coalescent mastoiditis. For a time, the disease may remain walled off within the mastoid bone. But eventually, it can spread through the outer table of the mastoid bone to give a subperiosteal abscess. And if the pus ruptures through the periosteum, it can track medially along the posterior belly of the digastric muscle, emerging in the submandibular triangle as what is what we now call Sitilis abscess. Lux abscess. This was described by Henry Look, who described a subperiosteal temporal abscess. Infection spreads from the middle cavity via submucosal tissue planes, especially through the incisura of rivinus and along the branches of the deep auricular artery to form an abscess deep to the temporalis muscle. And when it forms, this is called the Lux abscess. Here we see a picture of how the abscess spreads through the incisor of rivinus from the middle cavity along the branches of the deep auricular artery to form an abscess deep to the temporalis muscle. Zygomatic abscess Zygomatic abscess happens when the infection sub spreads subperiosteally over the posterior root of the zygoma producing a zygomatic abscess elevating the periosteum under the lower edge of the temporalis muscle. The upper half of the auricle is displaced away from the skull and downwards. Here we see a picture of a zygomatic abscess. A very rare type of extension is from the cells of the root of the zygoma downwards and forwards into the mandibular fossa and here the abscess appears just in front of the tragus with the displacement of the mandible to the opposite side resulting in malocclusion. Mastoid abscess A retroauricular subperiosteal mastoid abscess is a result of extension of coalescent mastoiditis onto the surface of the mastoid process itself and this extension usually occurs through the cribriform area behind the supramiatal spine. The tissues of the mastoid process are thick and red due to the thickness of the periosteum 
and the subcutaneous tissue. Fluctuation is the best sign of a mastoid abscess and although it may or may not be easy to detect initially, fluctuation can be demonstrated as the subperiosteal abscess matures. This is a picture of a mastoid abscess.